All right. So, I've covered my American Girl books. I've covered stories about my American Girl books today. I have done a massive doll collection update because I'm filming all these videos because I'm bored. <laughs> well, I'm not bored. I just, I want to do something other than play The Sims. Which I do an awful lot. Um, so, I feel like if you weren't an American Girl person, you were probably a Dear America person. And you might be asking, well, what's Dear America? And I'm like, well, let me show you. Oh, no. I'm going to have a repeat of what happened with my American Girl books when I pulled them off the shelf. All right. Because they aren't coming off the shelf. This is Dear America. These books are Dear America. These books are Dear America. And this is the spin off series of Dear America The Royal Diaries. <laughs> and we are going to talk about these books. Well, maybe I should split this into two. Okay. No. No. So we are going to talk about. The other way I learned history as a child. <laughs> I liked history. I loved history. I like learning about it still. But I don't do adult accounts of what happened. I learned my history through things like this. And then Google searching the heck out of everything. Because I Google things to death when I get interested. So... Dear America, how did I discover this? They were on the same shelf as the American Girl books in my school library. Like, they were b beside each other. Don't know why, but I checked one out because diary sounded good to me. And I was thinking, oh, and I would find, like, the subject. Like, I have very peculiar tastes when it comes to topics in history. So I would read books about the Civil War and the Titanic Especially the Titanic. Speaking of which, can we acknowledge this? And this is an older publication because you might notice that some of these have really fancy looking covers. But that's because they republished a lot of these. And then some of these didn't get republished at all. In fact, they have a vast majority, majority of these on Kindle. Uh, but they don't have all of them. I have a good chunk. Like, these aren't even all of them. I have several of them on Kindle. Okay. But, uh... I would read Dear America. And then Dear America segued into the Royal Diaries. And I actually don't have the first and I think only Royal Diaries book I read when I was a child because it was a library book but the royal diaries let's talk about those real fast um different famous female rulers throughout history and then some which i have no idea who they are honestly prior to these books i had the one for isabel of spain but i didn't like it very much after a while i mean i read it to death and i like i said i i don't want to read this one anymore so i got rid of it but um they have a book for freaking anastasia like history accurate anastasia remember the the thing i said about peculiar history topics the Romanovs. <laughs> it's it's such a tragedy. And then they have Christina, the Girl King, and I have no idea, or I had no idea who she was. But like, <laughs> I tumbled down the Goodreads rabbit hole because they categorize most series. I wish I'd brought some water in here. I've been talking an awful lot. Um, and I discovered this one. And I read the reviews. 
in the synopsis, in the title, which is The Girl King, I said, this sounds like something I would like. And this one actually has a story, but it's such a small story that I don't need to make an entire video about it. So, on the subject of this book, as with most of my books, I buy them secondhand. I order them off of thrift and go to the half ride bookstore. Well, some of these become my holy grail, I must find them books. This is the case with this one, because every time it came in stock on thrift, I was broke, or I needed to keep my money for Uber, or I was broke, and then it was always out of stock for the longest time, and then they were sold on eBay for like 20, 30 bucks a piece. I'm not joking. And so uh, last summer, my parents, they held a competition between my siblings and I about keeping the house clean to teach us to keep stuff clean. I don't know how well it worked, but the winner got $100 to spend however they chose. The runner up got 50 and third place got 25. Well, I was third place because I went to my grandparents a week before the competition ended. And, but instead of giving me money, money, my stepmom, she says to me, I'm going to let you order books off that website you like. Wrong book. I put it down. And, um, and so I just, I sent her pictures of things like the Dorothy Must Die series and Allie Carter's High Society because I like um, Allie Carter novels, and she ordered me, um, several Allie Carter books that, and I was like, yay! And I had sent her a picture of this one as an afterthought, and I told her that it was, like, I'd always had trouble getting a hold of it, mm -hmm. but she kept this one separate, because she was gonna surprise me. But I spotted it on her desk before she could. I was so happy. <laughs> I'm still happy when I think about this because I finally have it in my collection and it is never going anywhere. <laughs> and, uh, okay. So, on the topic of Holy Grail books... Can we talk about the Catherine the Great novel that took me forever to buy? <laughs> Again, it was the same situation as the Christina the Girl King novel. It, it really was. Except that I finally found it for, like, stupid cheap compared to what other prices it was selling for. And so I ordered it. But we had a giant snowstorm. So it was like the UPS or U USPS service was holding my poor book hostage, and I just wanted to get it and read it. But it was so, like, we had so much snow and ice that, like, nothing was running. But this is another book that I, like, love. Secondly, I thought that was a monkey when I saw the cover online. Her little dog that she's holding. I thought it was a monkey, because you can't really see that it's a dog at first glance, because of the way it's shaded. This is probably the oldest book in my Royal Diaries collection. Elizabeth the First. And I think that's all of them. Except Marie Antoinette. I don't remember how I got this one. I think I got it either at the store or I ordered it. But I picked out a few historical figures that I actually wanted to read about. Um, she is one of them because revolutionary or France is interesting. That's all I'm going to say about that topic. And now back to the uh, Dear Americas, which the uh, other books have covered up. So, um, a lot of these are bought because they were ones I read in the library as a kid, and then there are others that just sound interesting nowadays. Like, I can't get every Dear America books because I think there's like 25, give or take, in the series itself, and not all of them interest me, although a vast majority do. Um, this one, for instance, 
the Salem Witch Trial Diary. It's another one of those incredibly morbid subjects that I like learning about. And I actually read this one in the library when I was in middle school, and my dad was like, but she isn't a witch, right? And I'm like, no, dad. No. No one at the Salem Witch Trial was actually a witch. It was just a bunch of frenzied people. But, so we've got this one, and Voyage on the Great Titanic, which I bought for my own collection, because they were some of my favorite Dear America books. I'm just reorganizing my, my Regal Diary books. So these two were, so I could have personal copies of my two favorite Dear Americas. And continuing on that subject, there's ones like Down the Rabbit Hole that I like. I don't remember why I like this one so much. It just found it interesting because there was a whole, her parents died. Turns out they were murdered. It was an unintentional murder, but still. I just found it a very intriguing story. <laughs> And then there are the books that I picked up out of sheer curiosity, and if you're thinking I like every Dear America book under the sun, you are wrong. <laughs> because I have a bag behind me that has books that I plan to sell to the half price bookstore for pocket change, because we all know they don't really give you a lot of money. <laughs> but there are books that I actually pick up out of curiosity and enjoy, like this one. And... But, like I said, if you're thinking I like every Dear America and Royal Diary book I ever read, you're wrong. Because there was a diary of a girl, it was just another Civil War diary. I found the Civil War an interesting topic. On a side note, like, um, this takes place during the Civil War. Uh... I thought my soul would rise and fly takes place during the Civil War, and I can't show you that one because it's on my Kindle and my tablet is charging. And, um, yeah. So, what happened was I picked this up. I picked up this book, which I'm not going to dig out because I'm too lazy to do so. And I read it. I didn't really connect with it. It was okay. But I wasn't really that interested in keeping it, so I I put it in the bag to sell. And then there's another one about, um, um I don't remember the exact topic, but it's like immigrants, uh, and they're on a train to go, uh, have a homestead somewhere. It's one of those stories. It takes place around the time of the Civil War, before or after, I don't know. It was good. Don't think I'm ever going to want to read it again, though, so I'm selling it, because I know I can get most of these at the library. Uh, or on my Kindle. If I look hard enough, I can probably find a Kindle copy. So, I didn't... Those are the two I didn't connect with. I'm selling them. And then there's the uh, one that's kind of... I'm on the fence about. I actually can't show you that one either, because it is packed away in a box right now. The Fences Between Us, the World War, one of the World War Diaries. So it's Piper Davis's diary, and I'm so on the fence about it. I don't know why, but, like, when I was in elementary and middle school, I checked this one out, and I turned it back in, like, two days later. Not because I finished it, but because it was so large compared to what I'd been reading at the time, and I couldn't get into it. And I ordered it um, from a secondhand shop, and I still cannot seem to connect with this book, but I don't want to give up on it, which is why it isn't in this sell bag that I have over here. But I don't want to give up on it. And then there are the Amer um, not American Girl, Dear America books that just stick with you, like this one here, which I also bought secondhand, and you can tell because it used to be a library book somewhere, like The Willow Tree, Portland, Maine, 1918. So I don't know 
why, but this girl, I picked this one up. She loses her parents to a fever, a sickness that's been spreading, and she gets, she and her brother get adopted by, or not adopted, they go to a, um, I don't know what it's called, orphanage of some kind run by this really obscure at the time of this published religious group, and I just found it very interesting. There are just some of these that I find generally interesting. And finally, there's the tale of how I read the Abigail Diaries backwards. So I read the second book before I read the first one. And side note about the second book, it's incredibly hard to find a physical copy of. Like, I had to get it on my Kindle because I cannot get a physical copy of the second book because they're always expensive or they're sold by Goodwill. And I don't trust Goodwill when they say a book's in good condition because I've seen some books at Goodwill that probably shouldn't be sold. But I want the second book so bad. Like, in physical form, so it can sit beside this one. But I read these backwards. I, uh, I've read Cannons at Dawn first. So, I already knew that she would get married. And she would become pregnant with a child. At, like, the end of her second diary. I don't think she actually has said child in the book. But she does. Um, she is pregnant later on and she doesn't know it at first but I read these backwards this was picked up during one of my I want to go to the bookstore and just buy random things episodes which I'm probably gonna have tomorrow because my boss is so sweet she gave me a gift card for the bookstore because she knows I like to read <laughs> and then we have, I want to, I don't know why I call her Kit's equivalent, but just because she's like 1930s depression era, uh, America, but I feel like she and Kit would be friends. But this is the only paperback version of the Dear America book I own. I didn't even know they did these in paperback. That. It's paperback, and I wonder how like it was someone's Christmas gift. See, it says to Madison from Miss Brown, and someone sold this, and I'm over here like, but it was a Christmas gift. And I mean, I can't judge too much because I've sold Christmas gifts that I've gotten and lost interest in over the years. I mean, everyone does. You can't hold on to everything forever. But I'm just like, I want to know the story about how this particular book got picked out. I don't know. But I guess that ends the Dear America video. Except for the side note that there were little dolls. Like, they had a little doll line. Like, not American Girl worthy doll line. Like, they had small dolls. I think they were small. And they come packaged with the book. Or they did. And I found them on eBay. And I have yet to own one, but one day, one day I will.